Hello students. So in the previous class, I have given introduction to subset, proper subset and superset. Now we will continue with that itself. Suppose if we take the set A as one, two, three, and B as one, two, three, four. I say that here A is proper subset of B. The main reason is because A is not same as B. But all the elements of A are present in set B. That's why A is proper subset of B. Now, if A has only one element, like two, then this kind of set is called single ton set. A set which has only one element. So single ton set definition is a set having only one element. Okay. Now let us consider the sets phi. A set is having 1 comma 3. Set B is having 1 comma 5 comma 9. And set C is having 1 comma 3 comma 5 comma 7 comma 9. Now, what will be relation between phi and B? Empty set will be the subset of every set. So you have to write phi is the subset of B. Next, what is the relation between A and B? A is not the subset of B because 3 belongs to A, but 3 does not belong to B. Similarly, what is the relation between A and C? I can say A is subset of C because 1 and 3 belongs to A and the same 1 and 3 belongs to C also. Similarly, what is the relation between B and C? I can say B is the subset of C because 1, 5, 9 elements belong to set B and the same way, 1, 5, 9 elements belong to C also. This is how we can uh, say what is a subset we can understand. Okay, similarly, the set A is having A, E, I, O, U. And set B is having A, B, C, D. Now, can A be subset of B? No, because E, I, O, U belongs to A, but E, I, O, U does not belong to B. That's right. Okay, can you call B a subset of A? No, that is also not possible. Because B, C, D belongs to B, but B, C, D does not belong to A. That is the reason. Okay, let us go to another question. Like A, B, C are three sets. I'll describe more about these three sets. Let A be subset of B and B be subset of C. Then will 
ए बी सबसेट ऑफ सी इफ नॉट गिव एन एग्जाम्पल दैट्स द क्वेश्चन सो फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल आई एम से इफ ए इज सबसेट ऑफ बी एंड बी इज सबसेट ऑफ सी देन ए विल नॉट बी सबसेट ऑफ सी ए विल नॉट बी सबसेट ऑफ सी वाई आई गिव यू वन एग्जाम्पल सपोज इन ए आई हैव ओनली वन एंड इन बी आई हैव वन कॉमा टू लेट इज मेक वन करेक्शन दिस इज ए बिलोंग्स टू बी not subset so a belongs to b means you have to take one in flower brackets then i can say a belongs to b and now you can see that a is belonging to b because in a you have the set a is the set one and that set 1 is present in b that's why okay now we will take a set c i will take set 1 elements 2 and 3 because now i can say b is subset of c but what can i say is a subset of c no because 1 belongs to a the element 1 but the element 1 does not belongs to c that's why the set 1 belongs to c but the element 1 does not belongs to c that is why a is not subset of c so just one correction you have to make in the question because uh it's not printed correctly okay now we will discuss about set of real numbers real numbers is a set which has natural numbers it's a very big set natural numbers are also called as real numbers whole numbers are called as real numbers integers are called as real numbers rational numbers are called as real numbers irrational numbers they are also called as real numbers all these are called real numbers so the set of natural numbers you know what it is already i have told you in the previous class set of natural numbers means they start from 1 2 3 4 and goes on whole numbers means starts with 0 1 2 3 4 and goes on integers means they start at minus infinity minus 3 minus 2 minus 1 0 1 2 3 and goes up to infinity then rational numbers means it will have x such that x is in the p by q form q is not equal to 0 and p and q are integers this is set of rational numbers so from this i can say natural numbers are subset of whole numbers whole numbers subset of integers integers subset of rational numbers rational numbers subset of real numbers like the second c isn't it now before going further we have to discuss about writing intervals already you know how to write the intervals but just i am reminding you again 
Suppose if there is a number line and on this number line, I have numbers A and B. If I am not including A and B, but I'm including numbers between A and B, then the interval I will write open interval. This is called open interval. But otherwise, if I have a number line and on this number line, I have two numbers A and B. I'm including both A and B and I'm including the numbers between A and B. Then I will write closed interval AB. Similarly, if I have a number line having two numbers A and B on it, A is here, B is here. If I will not include A, but I will include B and I will include the numbers between A and B. Then this interval will be open on the right side and closed on the right side. The interval will be open on the left side and closed on the right side. Similarly, if I have number line and on this number line, I will have two numbers A and B. I'm including A, but I'm not including B and I'm including the numbers between A and B. Then this interval will be closed on the left side and open on the right side. The same thing I can write as inequalities also. Like here I can write x is a number which is greater than a and less than b. x is a number which is greater than or equal to a and less than or equal to b. x is a number which is greater than a and less than or equal to b x is a number which is greater than or equal to a and less than b. Intervals can be written in form of inequalities also. If you want to find length of any interval here, any one of these, if you want to find the length, you have to do b minus a. You will get the length of the interval. Okay, the next topic is power set. What is power set? Listen to my explanations and try to understand carefully because all these will be helpful when you will be learning for K set. Suppose I will consider a set having elements 1 and 2. So I will write all possible subsets of this set. All possible subsets means empty set is the subset of every set. Then I will take only one make a set. This is the subset of A. I'll take only two and make a set. This is also subset of A. I will take both 1 and 2 and make a set. This is also subset of A. If I write all these subsets as a set, that set is called power set of A. So what is the definition for power set of A? Power set is a set of all possible subsets of set A. So, in set A, if you count, number of elements in set A is 2. But if you count the number of elements in the power set of A, 1, 2, 3, 4 are there. That means it will be 2 square. This 2, the number of elements in A, you have to square it. 
then you will get the number of elements in the power set. For example, if the number of elements in the set A is M, in A you will have N elements. Then the number of elements in the power set A will be 2 power M. This M I'm talking about. This is used as shortcut method. For example, if I take the set A having A, B, C. Number of elements in set A is 3. So number of elements in the power set of A will be 2 power 3. That is 8 elements you will be having if you make power set. Okay. So after power set, we are going to learn about universal set. The name itself will tell you what is universal set. Universal set is like a parent set. It is the biggest set you are dealing with. Universal set is denoted by U. Now, universal set will be such a biggest set that all other sets which you are talking about, A, B, C, they all will be subset of universal set. A will be subset of universal set. B is subset of universal set. C is subset of universal set. Universal set will be such a big set containing all A, B, C. For example, the set of real numbers you can take as universal set because it has natural numbers, whole numbers, integers, rational numbers, irrational numbers, everything. So with this, we have completed the conceptual part. We can go to exercise 1.3 and do the problems. The first question is you have to fill with subset or not subset in the blanks. First one, the set having 2, 3, 4 and the set having 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Because Two, three, four elements are present here also. We can say the first set is the subset of the second set. Similarly, we have A, B, C set and B, C, D set. Now, only B and C are present in the second set. A is not present. That is why the first set is not the subset of the second set. Next, third one. X such that X is a student of class 11 of your school. This is the first set. And what is the second set? X such that X is student of your school. So because class 11 students are also students of your school, we can say the first set is subset of the second set. It's very easy to write whether it is subset or not a subset. That's it. Understand the question carefully. Next, fourth one. The first set is X such that X is a circle in the plane. This is the first set. And what is the second set? X such that X is a circle in the same plane with radius 
one unit. So here all circles are there, but here circles with radius one unit is there. So the first circle, first set elements, all do not belong to the second set. So the first set is not the subset because it has only all circles. First set has all circles, but second set only radius with one unit circles are present. Next fifth one, x such that x is a triangle in a plane. The second set is x such that x is a rectangle in the plane. So first set is having triangles. Second set is rectangles. Triangles cannot be same as rectangles. So the first set is not the subset of the second set. Next sixth one. x such that x is an equilateral triangle in a plane. This is the first set. The second set is x such that x is a triangle in the same plane. So the first set has only equilateral triangles, but the second set has any triangle. So in any triangle means in that equilateral triangle also will be there. So first set is subset of second set. Seventh one, x such that x is an even natural number. The second set is x such that x is an integer. So in the first set you have even natural numbers and in the second set you have integers. You know even natural numbers are integers only. Even natural numbers are integers only. So you can say the first set is subset of second set. Okay, next second question. This is true or false question. First one, the set having A comma B is not subset of set having B, C, A. Here we have A, B. Here also we have A, B. So it must be subset. But they are saying not subset. So they are saying false. Next, A comma E is subset of the set having X such that X is a vowel in English alphabet. So if you see, first set is having A comma B, A comma E. The second set vowels means A, E, I, O, U. So a and E which are present in the first set, they are present in the second set also. That means the first set is the subset of the second set. It is true. Already they said it is subset. Next, the set having 1, 2, 3 is a subset of set having 1, 3, 5. This is false because... 2 is present in the first set, but 2 is not present in the second set. So the first set cannot be subset. Next fourth, the set having A is subset of set having A, B, C. This is true because in the first set A is there, which is there in the second set also. So I can say the first subset is subset of second set. Fifth one, the set having A belongs to the set having A, B, C. This set cannot be belongs to. 
the set will be always subset it has to be subset not belongs to so false sixth one first set x such that x is an even natural number less than 6 and the second set is x such that x is a natural number which divides 36 So in the first set you have even natural numbers two, four, less than six. The first set. In the second set, natural numbers which divide thirty six. One divides thirty six. Two divides thirty six. Three divides thirty six. Four divides thirty six. Six divides thirty six. Right, and nine divides thirty six. Not only that, eighteen divides thirty six. Before eighteen, I will write something else. So nine divides thirty six. Twelve divides thirty six. Eighteen divides thirty six. Thirty six divides thirty six. So you can see in the first set two and four are there, which are present in the second set also. So I can say first set is the subset of second set, and they also told the same. So what they said is true. Next. Next question also. They gave you the set A as one, two, three, four forms an element. Five. You have to tell true or false for the below things. First one, the set three comma four is subset of A. It is not subset of A. It is false. it is the element of a belongs to a okay second 3 comma 4 belongs to a yes 3 comma 4 is the element in a it belongs to a just now i told you so true third one 3 comma 4 set it is an element of set which is subset of a yes in this set you have the element 3 comma 4 in a also you have the element 3 comma 4 so it can be subset one belongs to a yeah one is an element which belongs to a that is true one is the subset of a that is false one is an element it belongs to a it is not a set next sixth one 1 to 5 forms subset of a yes because 1 to 5 are present in set a also so it is subset of a means true next 1 to 5 belongs to a 1 to 5 is a set set cannot belong to a set has to be subset so this is false next eighth one the set having 1 2 3 is subset of a this is also false because the elements 1 2 are present in a 
but the element 3 is not present in A. 3 does not belong to A. That's why it became false. Next, ninth one. Phi belongs to A. Phi is an empty set. It has to be subset of A, not belongs to. So this is false. Tenth one. Phi is subset of A. Yes, this is correct because phi is a set and empty set. Empty set is subset of every set. Eleventh. The set having phi as an element is subset of A. The phi element is present in this set, but the phi element does not belong to A. So, being subset is not correct. It is false. Okay. We'll go to next question. That is fourth question. The fourth question says, you have to write all possible subsets. First one, the set having only one element. So, phi is the subset and we can take only element A and make a set. These are the four, four possible subsets. Second, the set having A and B. Of course, phi is a subset. Take the set having only A. Take the set having only B. Take the set having A and B. These all are possible subsets. Third, Take the set having elements 1, 2, 3. Phi, of course, is the subset of every set. Take set with 1. Take set with 2. Take set with 3. Take set with 1, 2. Take set with 1, 3. Take set with 2, 3. All these are subsets of the given set. Not only that. You can even take all the 1, 2, 3. That is also subset of the given. Okay, fourth one. Phi. For phi, only phi is the subset. Nothing else. Let's go to question number 5. You have to find number of elements of power set of A. If A is empty set. For empty set, if you take subsets, only phi is the subset. Right? So, in power set of A, you will have only five. Only one element will be there. Next. We'll go to question number six. Write as intervals. First one. X such that X belong to set of real numbers. X is greater than minus 4, less than or equal to 6. So, at minus 4, the interval will be open. At 6, the interval will be closed. Second set. X such that X belongs to set of real numbers. X is greater than minus 12, but less than minus 10. The interval is open at minus 12 and open at minus 10. The third one. X such that X belongs to set of real numbers. X is greater than or equal to 0 and less than 7. So, left side for 0 it is closed. But right side for 7 it is open.
Next fourth, x such that x belongs to set of real numbers. X is greater than or equal to three, less than or equal to four. On the left side, three is included, and on the right side, four is also included. So this is how you will write intervals. Okay, coming to question number seven. So you have to write in set builder form. I will give you interval. You have to write in set builder form. First one, minus three comma zero. So I will write x such that x belongs to real numbers, and x is greater than negative three, less than zero. Open interval. Both the sides open. Next is both the sides closed. So you will write x such that x belongs to set of real numbers. X is greater than or equal to six, less than or equal to twelve. Both the sides closed. That's why equal to. Next third, left side open, right side closed. So x such that x belongs to R. Left side you can't take six greater than six, but right side less than or equal to twelve. You can take twelve also. Next fourth one. Left side closed, right side open. X such that x belongs to set of real numbers. Negative twenty three x is greater than or equal to negative twenty three, but it is less than five. So these are the ways for writing the set builder form for intervals. Coming to the next question. the next question that is eighth question is write universal set think carefully and tell what could be the universal set if i am considering set of right triangles so for this i can take universal set as set of all triangles all sort of triangles in which right triangle is also included okay second question set of isosceles triangles for this also i can take universal set as all triangles because in triangles isosceles triangles are also included okay coming to question number 9 set a is given as having elements 1 3 5 set b having elements 2 4 6 set c having elements 0 2 4 6 8 now i am giving you some options for universal set like this can be universal set having 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 or this can be universal set that is just 5 empty set or this can be universal set having 0 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 or one more option the universal set can be 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 because i am taking into consideration set a set b and set c i must cover all the elements that is 0 1 2 3 4 6 and 8 so all these are present in the third option 
So this can be my universal set. So with this, we have completed exercise 1.3. Now, before starting 1.4, we have to discuss about a few concepts. Uh, we have a lot of time to discuss the concepts related to 1.4. Then if time per doesn't permit, we will do 1.4 exercise in the next class. So the concepts you will be learning is about Venn diagrams. Venn diagrams are the diagrams which will be useful to understand about the sets in a diagrammatic way. How that is possible. Always universal set is denoted by a rectangular box, big box. And after that, whatever sets we take, they will be inside. Like A will be inside, B will be inside, C will be inside. These sets, small, small sets will be inside. Now, how to represent universal set, I will show you in Venn diagram. Suppose I will say let us take universal set and in universal set I will be having elements 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. That means somehow inside the box I must have these elements. Suppose if I say like a is the subset of universal set. And then that means A is inside universal set. So I will draw the circle A. For other sets, I will draw circles. Only for universal set, a box. So for set A, I will draw the circle. Now if I say in the set A, I have elements 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. That means I have to put 2, 4, 6, 8, 10 inside the circle. Now suppose if I say B is the subset of A. That means I have to draw the set B inside A. But B is having elements 4 and 6. So taking only 4 and 6 inside B, B will be inside A because B is the subset of A. For B also I will draw circle. For A also I will draw circle. Only for universal set I will draw boxes. So like this, what element is inside the universal set? The remaining elements, one will be here, two is inside A. So I have to write three in the box, four is inside A and B, five I will write in the box, six is inside A and B, then 7 I will write in the box, 8 is inside A, 9 is in the box, 10 is inside A. So I now I can say all these elements 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 are in the box. They are in the universal set. So this is how Venn diagram will help you. Easily you can understand if you learn with Venn diagrams. Now, we will discuss about operations on sets.
there are many operations like normally you have learned about addition subtraction multiplication but the sets do not have these operations the operations in these sets first is union of sets this is the first operation on sets what is union of sets suppose a and b are two sets then i can write union of sets as a union b i will read it as a union b and what does a union b is it is a set in which you will have elements of a elements of a or elements of b whenever union i will use the word or what do you mean by this suppose in a i have 2 4 6 8 and in b i have 6 8 10 12 12 then what is a union b i will write elements of set a because it will have elements of set a i told you and now it will have elements of set b also so i have to write elements of set b also but one thing you have to remember i will not repeat so already 6 and 8 i have written i will not repeat i will write 10 and 12 that means i have covered all the elements whether it is a or b that is only union one more example suppose a is the set having a e i o u and b is the set having a i u so i will take a union b first i will write the elements of set a now i will write elements of set b but already i have written a i u i need not write again i will close it so here you can see a union b is nothing but the set a only why this has happened this has happened because b is the subset of a so whenever if b is the subset of a you can remember a union b will be a only remember this okay another example suppose the set x is having the names ram geeta akbar and these are students of class 11 who are in the school hockey team so these are students of class 11 which are who are present in school hockey team so now what i will do i will take another set y in set y i will write the names geeta david and ashok who are they they are also students of class 11 but they are in school football team not hockey team they are in school football team so how will you write x union y i will write all the names which are present in x ram geeta akbar 
Now I will write all the names which are present in set Y, but I will not reveal. Geeta already I have written. So I will write just David and Ashok. Now, what does this interpret? What does this X union Y tell us? It will tell that these are the students of class 11 in school hockey team or football team or both because Geeta is present in both the teams, hockey team and football team. Now, how will you show this with the Venn diagram? A union B. First of all, as I told you, I will take universal set as a box. I can write at one corner. Then I will take the set A as circle, set B as circle. Now A, first I will color A. I'll take all the elements of A. Then I will take all the elements of B, but I will not double shade. I will not take double times. I will take all the elements of B. So this diagram denotes a union B. And the definition of A union B is the set having X such that X belongs to set A or X belongs to set B. This is how we will define union. Now, Regarding union, there are some operations in the sets. Like, first one is commutative law. You have learned about commutative law in addition, multiplication. The same way in sets, A union B equal to B union A. In sets, in union operation. The second is associative law. What is associative law? This also you have learned earlier. A union B, union C will be same as A union B union C. This is in unions in set. The third one is identity law. This also you have learned. In unions, A union empty set will be A only. So, phi is identity. It is identity set, phi. Remember that. Okay, fourth one. Idempotent law. What is this idempotent law? A union A will be A only. Fifth. Universal union A will be universal set only. This is called law of universal. law of universal set. So these all are regarding union. Coming to intersection, we may not complete intersection, but we will learn. Just like union, we have intersection of sets also. So that I am going to write or teach now. Intersection of sets. If A and B are any two sets, then 
A intersection B, you will write like this. Intersection of sets means A intersection B. So this I can write as elements of A and and I have to use and not or. I have to take elements of A and elements of B, the common elements. That means A intersection B, I will write as the elements X such that X belongs to A and as well as they belong to B. Right? Suppose if I take the same example which I have taken above. If the set A is 2, 4, 6, 8 and the set B is 6, 8, 10, 12. What is A intersection B? What are the elements present in both? 6 and 8 are present in both. So A intersection B will have 6 and 8. Similarly, the other example I have taken before, if A is having A, E, I, O, U and B is having just A, I, U, what will be A intersection B? What are the elements present in both A, I, U, A, I, U? So I will write A, I, U. This is how I will tell you about intersection. One more example also I have taken before. What is that? X is the set having Ram, Gita and Akbar who play in hockey team. Then why is the set having Gita, David and Ashok? So these are in hockey team. These are in football team. Suppose if you take X intersection Y, what will you get? Geeta is the only girl present in both the sets. So you will take only Geeta. That means X intersection Y, how will you interpret? Student of Class 11 in the school in both hockey as well as football team. She is in both the teams. That is X intersection Y. I'll give you one more example. Suppose in A you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And in set B you have 2, 3, 5, 7. Find A intersection B, the elements which are present in both. 2 is present in both, 3 is present in both, 5 is present in both. 7 is present in both. 2, 3, 5, 7. And if you observe carefully, it is nothing but the set B only. Why this is happening? Because B is subset of A. So whenever, if B is subset of A, then definitely A intersection B will be B only. That is for sure. Okay. Coming to Venn diagram and properties of intersection that we will do it in the next class and we will complete exercise 1.4 also in next class. With this, I will end the class. Come prepared for the next class.